Ramble. The Drinkworks Home Bar by Keurig is officially the gift of the year. Gift one or get one for yourself. The Drinkworks Home Bar is the perfect way to set any holiday vibe. The Home Bar makes over 30 bar quality cocktails literally at the push of a button. I love making myself a mojito. It's so easy. It's quick and I get my drink right away. No waiting. The Drinkworks Home Bar is so easy. Just insert your favorite cocktail pod, which has everything in it, real ingredients, natural flavors, and premium spirits and then just push start. That's it. In less than a minute, the home bar perfectly makes your drink. Check it out at drinkworks.com and just for you guys, use code DRINK to save $50 on your home bar. Trust me, this is the gift of the year and code DRINK saves you 50 bucks at drinkworks.com. That's code DRINK only at drinkworks.com. Cheers. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. I am your host, Maggie, and I'm joined by my co-host, Becky. Hi! Uh, Rachel is here. Hello. And then we have a very special guest today, Alex. Hi. Alex works for Second Try, and we're so excited for you to come on. We're going to be talking about The Bachelor, which I know nothing about, but the rest of these three ladies in this room are very excited to talk. So I will. You'll be learning. I'll be learning (laughs) so much. By the end of the episode, Maggie, I hope. You are intrigued. I, I, You'll this, be a convert. Yeah. yeah. This season seems a little juicy, so I'm excited to get into it. I've heard all about it. It's like all over the internet. It's all over Twitter. Alex, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do for Try Guys LLC? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, guys. This is very Hi. exciting. Hello. Um, I'm a, an associate <laughs> producer here at the Try Guys, so I've been here a little over two years now. Yeah, so I worked with the guys at BuzzFeed on their branded videos um, and then came to the company a few months after it started. Um, and I think my first job that we ever did here was the office makeover, which was really oh, yeah. exciting because I came Lucky. in for my interview and it was a bunch of random furniture. <laughs> Rachel was working off of a futon. Um, <laughs> a broken futon. <laughs> a broken futon. Our first week we were doing the office makeover. So we were ripping out all the furniture, painting the walls. So it was like a nice start, fresh start for everyone. And it was like a fun job to come in on. That's awesome. And you're a food baby. I am. <laughs> Tell us about how how did food babies come to exist? Yes, I would love to know. I wasn't yeah. here when they started. Oh, that's right. And, and the name. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there were a lot of like iterations of the name going around. There were a lot. So YB and I met working here. I think I started a couple of months before her. And we kind of just hit it off right off the bat. You guys met here? Yeah, yes. I didn't know didn't YB read, before this. Really? You guys seem like such you guys, Yes, I thought you were friends for years. No, no I mean, me I would not be surprised like if you had matching tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, YB started, Alexandria was here, the three of us went to lunch twice, like, at uh, at their first week, and then every day after that, YB and Alex went to lunch together. So wait, you, got, like, you got booted? I got booted. <laughs> I was like, wow, they're falling in love. I'll just peacefully step Rachel away. was always invited, but you were very busy. <laughs> That's true. <gasps> That's also, insane. you guys just clicked. Like, I witnessed yeah. it before my very eyes. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of had a little office romance. Um, <laughs> we, we clicked right away, and we both... YB's full Korean, I'm half Korean, so we kind of clicked there. Mm -hmm. Um, And right away we started talking about our love of mukbangs, which is like not a normal thing to be into. (laughs) So like when someone else casually brings it up and you casually bring it up and you're both like, oh, you like that too? Like you're kind of like, okay, we're best friends now. Um, And so it's kind of like this just weird, I don't know. We've always loved these videos and it gives us like a weird sense of satisfaction. It's like ASMR for some people. Yeah. Yeah. and so we just started talking about like, oh, how fun would it be one day if we got to do these videos? And we talked about doing it for her channel. And then we kind of weaseled our way in when Keith started <laughs> doing a lot of Eat the Menu episodes. Oh, yeah. And we would take all of the leftovers, set up the camera back here, and Miles would help us in the back studio. And we would stay after hours and film our own videos like for no one. <laughs> for, no <laughs> for no one. No one asked us to do this. And so we would film it and kind of suggested it go on Patreon, like to maybe see how it goes. Um, so we really forced it upon the guys. <laughs> I remember one night yeah. 
I think YB and I were eating Olive Garden. Like we had a crazy amount uh-huh. of pasta out and it took us a long time. It was raining that day. It was, mm-hmm. it was a long day. And Ned came in and it was like eight o'clock at night and he came in to grab a TV and he didn't know we were here (laughs) and he didn't know we were doing this either. So we were just set up with all of these lights (laughs) and all of this pasta. Um, but it was fun. <laughs> and you were the leftover ladies at this point? Or what was yeah, the first oh, dumpster, dumpster divas. divas? Dumpster divas. Cleanup crew? <clears throat> Cleanup crew became the boys. So okay. that's Miles okay. and Jonathan mainly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Represent? <laughs> leftover ladies, I guess, had a negative connotation. So we had to take that away. And I think it was actually Sam who suggested the food baby's name. Yeah, that's Aww, the, definitely the best one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He said it and we were like, oh, that's the best name ever. Perfect. That's it. Yeah. Babies. Wow. So it was eating the leftovers from Eat the Menu. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was pre-COVID times, but <laughs> yeah, it, it worked out. Yeah. Wait, does that mean I'm a, technically a food baby now since I eat leftovers from Eat the Menu? <gasps> <gasps> Can I be an honorary food baby? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're... Also willing to call Keith a food daddy. Never. And you have to be in the videos <laughs> and you have to eat as much as they do. I, oh, I well, don't usually. Yeah. I'm usually a one bite Becky, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> one bite Becky. <laughs> one bite Becky. I come in for my eat the menu, random appearances. Cameo. <laughs> We're filming an episode this week if you want to stop by. Oh, I, I don't need all that Starbucks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I do want, I never get to come on eat the menu because I don't need all this meat. But Starbucks. There are meat free <gasps> options. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, there are. Starbucks is, let me sip some Starbucks. coffee. My yeah. caffeine tolerance is. Sky high. Keith was doing Eat the Menu for Pizza Hut, and there was so much pizza. I think it was Miles that suggested we host a leftover lounge. And so we made a lounge. A, a la- so this room that we're in became the lounge. We made a step and repeat right here. Oh my God. <laughs> You made a step and repeat? If Did you, you, like, if you unroll food? one of these pink sim- oh, seamlesses, yeah. I think, it still has like the, oh, the it pH doesn't. on it. <laughs> because we tried to use a pink seamless and it was all drawn on. That, that was wasn't you. my choice either. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can't even see it on camera. Um, but YB and I got like these dumb matching pink outfits from Forever 21, these floofy dresses, and everyone who was a guest on Eat the Menu would come back and... I think they would just bring their leftovers to us and we would all try it together. <laughs> and we had to share a footage. mic. It's, there's a lot of footage. Like we, <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. So we were in the video for maybe 30 seconds, but we have like eight hours of footage. <laughs> oh my God. Well, so the lounge never came to light. We're going to have to find that and cut it together. I think that's got to be an extra like bonus episode. Yeah, yeah, there was a little bit of it, but we were also like, we hired a freelance camera operator who didn't oh know us God. at all. And we had to explain why we were like in this random room of, room of a house eating Pizza Hut. In tutus. Um, in tutus. <laughs> and it was a fun day, but we were also sharing a mic, which was weird for us. We're not used to like having to stop talking. So that, it was fun. It was weird. Yeah. But it kind of. <laughs> lounge. You have to tell these guys, because I'm sure they don't know, about um, your dress code for food babies, which I think is so funny. It's oh, yeah. always we, matching, right? We kind of have this unwritten rule that we unwritten. like to match each other <laughs> and the food. Fu- and the food. They dress oh. like the food. They oh. always dress oh. like the so food. Funny. So in chicken nuggets, I uh, jog my memory. Like what? Are you wearing yellow? Yeah. Now I'm trying to remember. Chicken nuggets are dress early like chicken days. Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. I just we remember might have you dress like McDonald's colors. Oh, I showing up in salmon for the sushi video. Yeah, we dress like salmon colored. Is it weird uh, performing like in videos, doing like the mukbangs for uh, like YouTube? Because that's not yeah. what you, you know, went to school for. Or what you? <laughs> where, no, I wish I could have gone to school for mukbangs. Anybody? Yeah, that's school. not mukbang. technically your job, but like performing, right? Because yeah, yeah. your your background is in production. Yeah. Um, so I definitely didn't study to do this, um, and I don't Does think anyone. Maybe. I don't know. I did watch a lot of documentaries on um, competitive eaters to get some tips before this. <laughs> that um, is so funny. But yeah, like my background isn't in performing and I'm not necessarily super comfortable on camera. Yeah. Um, and I think being friends with YB before we started filming helped a lot. I think if I was just doing that with a stranger, like I would have still enjoyed it, but I don't think I would have been like as comfortable and as open 
Um, cause I'm, I'm not a performer, so I just, I do kind of clam up sometimes. Yeah. And what did you go to college for and where we know where you went to college? Cause we're all jealous <laughs> but for the audience. Um, so I went to the university of Ho- university of Hawaii at Hilo. Um, and I studied communication and anthropology, which doesn't really relate to what I'm doing now, but I guess the communication does. Yeah. Um, but basically I went to college and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I kind of wanted to go into PR. I originally wanted to be a journalist, but it's kind of a hard thing to major in and actually have a career in. Um, So I decided to study communication, but it was the best choice I ever made. I mean, I lived on an island. Um, I I got to go to the beach like on the weekends after school if I had free time. Um, All of my professors and fellow students were from all around the world because everyone would transfer in. Um, So I met a lot of really amazing people. And did you meet Will at college or did you guys decide to go to college together? Please tell us how you met. (laughs) (laughs) And Will is Alexandria's longtime boyfriend. Yes. Yes. Um, So Will and I have been together for about nine years now. Um, And we met before college. We were both in community college. We were 19 working at the Americana. Um, oh my gosh. And we, <laughs> what store, Alex? So we worked at a store called Gilly Hicks, which is now <gasps> gone. But, um, <laughs> That's why you wanted your baby to be in Hollister. Not that you have a baby. We had a conversation earlier about baby Hollister. Baby Hollister. Because um, isn't that a Hollister? Like, yeah, set? so Gilly Hicks was owned by Abercrombie, and it was a new brand that was like based in Australia, but it was all a fake story. Um, but it was all women's clothing, and they had lingerie. So they had like the best underwear, and they had Ooh. bras. Oh. And so... I worked at the store for, I think, almost a year before Will came in. And he only worked in the back because we couldn't have boys on the floor. It's kind of like Victoria's Secret. Like, you don't oh, want gosh. guys there when you're shopping for underwear. And tell us, like Abercrombie, do they only hire basically models? That was the weird part is I <laughs> was kind of scouted for the job because they uh-huh. this company was so weird. Whoa. <laughs> Yes. Yes, I thought that's how that worked. But <laughs> here's the other thing too. They had Alex was <laughs> discovered. Yeah. What, was the heck? Heck? what are you but, like walking in the mall and they saw you and they were, were like, like, get her over here. Have you heard, heard of Gilly Hicks? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it was a manager who walked up to me and she's like, How old are you? I was <gasps> like, Oh, I'm Creepy. 19. I was just like, Am I not old enough to be in the store? <laughs> and I was there shopping with my mom. Um, so they asked me to come in an interview and I did. And then I think Will also interviewed there because it was close to his house and all the boys, all of his like guy friends interviewed there because they all wanted to work at the store with the cute girls. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and this really worked out for him. It really <laughs> did. And here's the funny part, too, about the way they hired. They had a quota that they had to fill for each race. Oh. Oh. Because, and I think this was their attempt to be more <laughs> inclusive yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of lawsuits back in the day, and I think still are, about yeah. how kind of racist Abercrombie was. And it was mm-hmm. really only mm-hmm. white men and women that were hired. Um, and so after all the lawsuits happened, they really had to include everyone. And so they would, I saw like in the back room, they would check off like how many people they had scouted for the day. And I'm sure oh I was like on their their Asian list. They were like, beautiful Korean, check. check. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really weird place to work. Whoa. We had a booklet of like, how we could style our hair, how we could wear a makeup. If you came to work with like purple nail polish on, they made you go to the Rite Aid and oh get nail polish remover and take it off. Um, wow. If you had- What color could you wear? Only like, like neutrals. I could wear like light pink. You couldn't wear eyeliner. What? Not even like no bottom eyeliner. You couldn't wear a top. <clears throat> even and if so, it's super, super thin? Weird. Like, yeah, Whoa. like the, wear, the way I'm wearing my makeup now, if I came into work, they would give you a Q-tip and make you take off your <gasps> eyeliner. They wanted no oh. eyeliner because they wanted that like young Gwyneth Paltrow, like fresh yeah. beachy look because they're Aust- Australian. <laughs> because they're Australian. <laughs> but when you're 19, you don't want a makeup free look. You want to look you cute for everyone coming in. Yeah. 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 <gasps> Crazy. Wow. I mean, I think they were probably trying to be more diverse and inclusive, but yeah. the quotas just sound a little nuts. The quota was weird, but it was a very diverse group of people that worked there. Um, but anyways, Will and I mm. were working there one night, and it was like the late shift. Because like, <laughs> oh. two, I think like two times a year we would have to do overnight inventory. Mm-hmm. And so we would have shifts from like 11 to 5. Um, and Will came in and I was like, ooh, who's that cute boy? Because I didn't like anyone. Okay. Like, I met a lot of great friends there, but like, I didn't think anyone was cute. I never dated anyone there. And as soon as Will came in, I was like, ooh, who's this boy? 
Um, and I didn't wear makeup that day because I was running late and oh, my hair no. was in a dirty ponytail. <gasps> and he walked in and I was like, oh my God, why didn't I get ready today? <laughs> You're like, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> um, so I think we met one shift and then started dating like that weekend. Oh, Ooh. no. Yeah. Not like officially, but we like really liked each other from the beginning. Oh, so you like bond so fast. <laughs> you bonded fast with Will. You bonded yeah. fast with Like YB. I don't like anyone, but when I like you, I really yeah. like you. <laughs> You're like a penguin. Yeah. <laughs> you are mine forever. Yeah. <laughs> Mate for life. You know, one of my favorite things about the holiday season is the desserts. I am a huge fan cookie fan. I used to love going to the mall, walking around, smelling that fresh Miss Fields cookies cooking. Mrs. Fields has a ton of cookie gift options that you can get for your friends or for yourself. I personally love the Snowman Cookie Tower. It is delish. I love a basic chocolate chip cookie, and I think they just nail it. It comes in a cute little holiday box. It's nice and wrapped. It looks great under the tree and even better when you're eating it. It's ooey gooey. They have cookies, brownies, and a ton of other different types of desserts that you can get. Choose from Miss Field's huge selection of holiday gift baskets and cookie tins and spread the season's greetings we all love the most. Our listeners get 20% off site wide with promo code SITWITHUS at mrsfields.com. Just click or tap the microphone at the top and enter promo code SITWITHUS for 20% off your order. That's M R S F I E L D S.com. Promo code sit with us yeah. and then you guys went to you decided to go to Hawaii together yeah so he <clears throat> was actually already applying to schools and I still had another year left at community college um, so we did a year of long distance which was like oh. a lot to handle for my first love and we'd only been together yeah. a few months oh, when he you're left so young so it was yeah it was a very tumultuous year and oh. I was like taking 25 credits to try and get my GPA up. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit him and like the school was really cool and all of his friends were really nice. And he lived like walking distance from the beach. I thought this is a pretty good deal. I'm going to try it out. (laughs) And so I applied and went the next year and we lived together out in Hawaii. Wow. Wow. Why did you ever come back from Hawaii, you guys? (laughs) She missed the Americana. I did miss the Americana. The (laughs) mall was very sparse. (laughs) Um, there, there's not a lot of jobs out there, and I think if I didn't want to work, like have this career specifically, I mm-hmm. definitely would have stayed. Um, it's just a much slower lifestyle for what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'd like to retire there. I'd definitely like to go back, but I do I'd miss like it a lot. I'd like you to retire there with <laughs> a big <laughs> house for the rest of us to visit. Yes. yes. And then what made you apply at BuzzFeed? Was that like... A place that you'd always wanted to work, or was it just like it was there? I loved BuzzFeed. So <laughs> in college, like when I was at the <clears throat> library studying late, I was really on BuzzFeed, like <laughs> reading through all of the listicles. Uh-huh. Because I think like 2013, 2014 is when it really started to take off. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when their video department got really big, too. And so I was always a fan just from college. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I graduated from college, I started working in production um, on music videos and commercials, oh, cool. which was a fun and weird and like really stressful experience. Mm-hmm. And then I did that for about a year and worked on a feature. Um, and then a, a producer that I knew was working at BuzzFeed Freelance and suggested um, or recommended me to another producer there for a freelance job. So I ended up permalancing there for a year and it worked out wow. great because I did my first job there. And then there was a hiring freeze, but they still needed people. So I got the freelance rate for a full year before I went on staff. Oh, yeah. Um, And then that's where I met the Try Guys, and we we worked on all of those big branded videos together, and it was a lot of fun. And I was a really big Try Guys fan, too, before (laughs) I started working with them. So cute. That's so sweet. I remember my first, one of my first weeks at BuzzFeed, um, another director there was kind of giving me a tour, and we were walking around the building. So I was in a different whole different building from the Try Guys. Okay. They were at the DeLong Prey office and I was over at that tall sunset office. Mm-hmm. We were walking through and I think I saw like Keith and like Eugene and a couple other guys. And I was like, oh my God, Try Guys. <laughs> and I didn't say anything, but I was really excited because I love their videos. Um, and then our first time working together, I think I was just really quiet because I was really <laughs> nervous. Like I didn't want a fangirl. And I also came from like music video production where you don't talk to the talent, you don't yeah. talk to the directors. And so when I came to BuzzFeed and there was like 
other women there and everyone just talked to each other. It was a big culture shock, wow. but it was great. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And then you ended up at Second Try I and did. met the other love of your life, YB, and Food Babies was born. That's yeah. such a good origin story. It's great. I mean, it's I always wanted to do <clears throat> mukbangs, which was like kind of a weird secret dream of mine. Like before I came here, I contemplated starting my own channel and like just doing mukbangs Whoa. on my own. But then I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to wait a little <laughs> bit. Um, so it worked out great. So it's just me and Will and YB for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful. Do you have any ball. other secret weird dreams that you're willing to share? Secret weird dreams? You said doing oh, mukbangs do. was your secret mm. weird dream. Oh, what are my weird dreams? Like, I think from age, like, I don't know, third grade to like high school, I really wanted to be a chef. And I would watch the Food Network every single day. And I always love food. Cute. And I always have like a weird relationship with it where I always wanted to eat a lot, but it wasn't socially acceptable. And now it is. Um, <laughs> so I think that's that's my number one dream right now. Nice. Amazing. You're living nice. it. You're Did living you ever it. dream of going on The Bachelor? Kind <gasps> of did. But <laughs> I've been with Will longer than I've been watching The Bachelor. So it was never serious. Oh. But like it seems fun because... A lot of people come out of that with a lot of like new girlfriends, and I would love to just go and like make a bunch of new friends. <laughs> yeah, you could also do like paradise and just go for the yeah. vacation. You know, yeah, just go for the food. Um, but that's the real reason you're here, Alexandria. Mm -hmm. The real mm -hmm. other love of your life is Bachelor Bachelorette franchise. I love it. That might be my number one dream. Maybe I'll go on The Bachelor. One day. <laughs> Will is not allowed to listen to this episode. <laughs> you would definitely be on for the wrong reasons, which is just the experience of The Bachelor. I'd just be drinking wine the whole time and tanning and like hanging oh, out with the girls. Oh, you would be Corinne. I was going to say you'd be nice Corinne. Oh, I love nice Corinne. Corinne. I heard there's like a two drink. Okay, I was reading facts last okay. night just to prepare just on like what facts. I should know on the history of The Bachelor. And I read that out of... When did that happen? Like 2017 with Corinne. Yeah. Now there is, you can only have two cocktails or glasses of wine, I don't know, beer mm -hmm. per hour. Mm -hmm. That seems fact, reasonable. That seems reasonable. Yeah. Here's how they get reasonable. around it. You can order like two cups of vodka. Or you could oh order. Oh. You, if, Who or, wants to get around have, that? If you have like two shots an hour all afternoon, you could still get pretty trashed. Yeah. <laughs> Because yep. that was pretty dark with Corinne. Yeah, it was. That but little moment. Who wants to be trashed on national television? One of Will's best friends from high school is now a producer on The Bachelor, and he started out as a PA and a handler. Um, and what he works a freelance. A handler is um, kind of like a PA on set. Like, there's okay. so much cast to wrangle okay. that they will kind of just be on standby to okay. wrangle the ladies. I was like, <laughs> what does that have to do with The Bachelor? Like, <laughs> touch, <laughs> wrangling people? Okay, go ahead. Um, so he started out as a PA and he would also work freelance and I would hire him sometimes for my freelance shoots. And there's one time where I called him and he was whispering, but he did answer his phone. And I was like, hey, are you free for this job in a couple of weeks? Um, uh, we'd love to have you on. And he said, yeah, yeah, like, uh, let me call you back later, but I'm free. I was like, all right. And it was, it was weird. Okay. okay. And so later I found out that he was on set of The Bachelor, and he was watching a one-on-one -on -one date. I forgot what season this was, but a couple was in a hot tub, and he had to be on standby in the bushes nearby, um, <laughs> just like just in case they needed anything. Um, Not filming, just yeah, he hanging was filming. out. <laughs> he was just there in case he they was needed. They were filming, though. He wasn't. Yeah. He's not a camera op. Yeah. yeah. But, like, the, they were being filmed in the hot tub. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, he, but he still answered this call, which is why he was whispering. <laughs> but his job was just to, like, hang out in the trees at nighttime while this couple was in a hot tub. It was nighttime, too. So, it was, like, a little creepy. <laughs> Creepiest thing you've ever that heard. Is so that weird. is so funny. I love it. Yeah. But I he, love he's it. now a producer on the show and he loves his job and I love his job. So it <laughs> works course. out great. So I'm, we're like w one degree of separation yeah, from yeah. the Bachelor producer. When I was on um, jury duty, one of the guys dropped at the very end of like what we were doing. He was like, oh, yeah, and my wife's a producer on The Bachelor. <gasps> and I was like, I turned, I was like, I can't believe we've been here for a month and you haven't said anything. I was like, ask her if you can tell me anything. And he's like, <laughs> she's going to say no. Like he was this like tatted guy that was yeah. like, child, please stop talking. To <laughs> and every day I'd come back in and be like, so did she... Did you say you could tell me anything? <laughs> no. no. 
<laughs> oh, ma'am. Yeah. And you, um, to pivot, you actually met Pilot Pete at a I bar. Did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Pilot Pete was on <laughs> last Maggie. season's Bachelor. He was last season's Bachelor. Easily one of the most boring Bachelors they've the ever had. Worst one. Um, and he's just like kind of dweeby. He flew yeah. through like all his final, after he got engaged to one girl, he broke up with her and he got engaged to another one. Mm-hmm. Then they broke up and then he went with his third choice. He like was the most flip floppy. So flip floppy. But I, I do think it was a lot of producer involvement though. Yeah. I think he liked <clears throat> Kelly from the beginning. And mm-hmm. I remember watching. Man- manipulated him. Yeah. I watched some behind the scenes thing where Kelly and Peter were talking and she was saying that like she was really mad that day that they had their one-on-one date where they went flying. I think he took her flying Mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, you seemed really pissed off. And I guess like she had been upset later that day. And I think it was the producers kind of like trying to get her out of there. Oh, And so I don't know. I think the producers just didn't want her to make it or something. Cause she wasn't dramatic at all. She was, she was a lawyer. She was an adult. And I think she was just really there to like, hang out with this guy who she already met and already liked. Yeah. And I didn't like dislike anyone else in the season, but I think they were forcing it with Hannah Ann. Oh, who yeah. also seemed yeah. like great, but I just don't think they connected. No. And I think he d- really did like Madison, but when she left, I think he was done with it. <laughs> yeah. And then they kind of yeah. forced him back together again. And it was like this whole dramatic thing where they were on after the final rose and they were, yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like the show was trying to force them together and it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And I mean, if they weren't together, we wouldn't have gotten bring her home. Oh, yeah. His parents (laughs) are Barb. Was it Barb? His mother specifically. You don't want to marry into that family. No. On Pilot Pete's After the Final Rose, which is when they do. um, It's like the after show. It's the after show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have the couple come out, whatever. So there was a lot of drama with Pete and who he picked, especially with his family, because they liked one girl more than the other girl. Mm -hmm. And he ended up with the other girl. But in one of the. And they were more opinionated of their own mind than supportive of him. Oh. They were kind of like his mom was definitely like, do what I want. Mm. Like. But the clip we had to watch a lot, like in the. you know, when they say, oh, coming up this season oh, on yeah, The Bachelor yeah. was always Barb just going, bring her home. <laughs> and she's like crying. Keith and I will sometimes yell that at each other if we're like going out to get takeout. And then I'll be like, bring home. it home. He got engaged oh to the girl his mom did not like. And yeah. and the whole after the final row, oh, wait, she sat in the audience didn't she, didn't giving she like her? a stink eye, just pissed. She was like, I think he got like engaged to Hannah Ann, yeah. who his mom did like. Uh-huh. And then they broke it off, and then she oh, hated Madison. She hated Madison. Madison. Yeah, Oops. with the eyelashes. I'm she does love you, Kelly, though. The oh, that's Bachelors good. and Bachelorettes, the moment their show is <clears throat> over, they poof from my memory, and they don't exist anymore. It's not real celebrity. Uh. I'm only invested in them while they're actively on TV. Mm-hmm. See, I still follow, like, we started watching Bachelor. I, what, when was your first Bachelor? Like, what's the first season you remember watching? So I started getting into The Bachelor because I would watch um, Celebrity Couples Therapy on VH1. <laughs> and Juan Pablo, who was the most hated Bachelor yes. Yes. Yeah. in history. Very bad man. And Very his, bad. like, final choice, Nikki, they ended up going on this couples therapy show. And he was so awful. I was just like, I got to get into this show. (laughs) And then I think Chris Souls' season was the first season I really got into, Mm -hmm. which was great. There's so many great women from that show. We got like Ashley I, Caitlin Bristow. Oh, um, that's where Carly. There's so many people there. See, we didn't get into it until JoJo season. Oh, JoJo was great. We started watching, because I had watched it like kind of in high school. I watched like Emily Maynard season. Oh, wow. Um, So when they were like, oh, Ari's the new Bachelor, I was like, how old is that man? <laughs> I yeah. watched that in high school. Um, 105. Yeah, we watched JoJo season and we really liked JoJo. Um, and then we continued to follow JoJo online. And oh, she's JoJo like, too. yeah, one of the only like bachelorette mm-hmm. people that I still follow. And she has like a house flipping show now. Yeah. She's, she owns She's like on 60 HGTV. properties. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like her and Jordan had a really good, um, I don't know. I just thought their like story was really cute and that they like actually really liked each other. Yeah. And it wasn't like a crazy dramatic season because was that chad the whistling oh i did want to talk about chad chad, chad yeah i think that was Chad's season because that's how i got keith into bachelorette i was watched the first like two episodes and i was like keith 
The editing on this show is amazing. I was like, they made this man walk through the woods and creepily whistle. And he's like, okay, I'll watch. Oh, and then he was hooked. commercials, like for the next week, they can just turn literal garbage into some looking so juicy. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to watch mm-hmm. next week. The best week. part of every episode is what's coming on next week. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the super cut of just what you want to see. Yeah. Coors Hard Seltzer isn't your average seltzer. They were inspired by a generation that wants to do good in the world with a mission to restore America's rivers. You may not know this, but 80% of America's rivers are drying up. So with a partnership with Change the Course, Coors Hard Seltzer is helping to protect and restore America's rivers. Each 12-pack of Coors Hard Seltzer restores 500 gallons of fresh water to U.S. rivers and the communities that depend on them. The result is 1 billion gallons of water restored to 16 river basins across the U.S. in one year alone. You buy Coors Hard Seltzer, you help restore 500 gallons of water into America's rivers. It's that simple. Visit CoorsSeltzer.com to find Coors Seltzer near you. That's CoorsSeltzer.com. For every 12-pack sold through 831-2021, Coors will purchase services from Change the Course to restore 500 gallons of fresh river water. Details at CoorsSeltzer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Margaret, how much Bachelor have you watched? When was your first episode? Was it this week? In I think I only watched maybe one or two seasons, but it just got to the point where it was so long. There would be like two hour episodes and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I only have a certain amount of time after I get home from work. I can't. I can't. I Can you. I wear, watch it on double speed? <laughs> <laughs> Zach loves to do that. <laughs> he watches everything on, on double, double speed. speed. You can't do that with TV. No, you can't. So I think I watched Nick Via. Nick, I don't know how to say it. <clears> oh, I love his season. I yeah, his, his season's, season's really good. And I think that was the only, I think I watched Bachelor in Paradise like one season as well, just because okay. it was like okay. the culmination of Nick Vial's season. Mm-hmm. Am I yeah. saying mm-hmm. his last name right? I hope I am. <laughs> I stood behind Vial. him on the red carpet at the yeah. streamies. Okay. I stood like one foot away from him and I was like, you're not nice enough. <laughs> I sat next to him at Jones on third and I was just like silently just there. sipping, sipping my iced latte. I was just like... <laughs> Alex, I love that you know that he's always there. Well, Will used to work at, my boyfriend Will used to work at CBS right next to Jones on 3rd. And he would go there every day for coffee and Nick was always there. See? Kind of just hanging out, waiting to be noticed. Yes. Why was Nick at the streamies? He had no reason. He was not nominated. It's just like any event, Nick Vial will go and be there. He wants to be seen. That makes sense. His manager is telling him to do it. (laughs) Go to Jones on 3rd every day, Nicholas. Do you listen to his podcast? I do. You do? Is it good? I've seen like, some is. clips. He's a good host and he usually has like really solid guests on. Like he's had Chris Harrison, he's had all of the leads on. Yeah. Um and he'll also have I don't know, other celebrity mm-hmm. guests on that are fans of the show but not related, like Rachel Bilson was on. Um oh. and I like him. He's a good podcast voice. Yeah. Let's get into Claire and Tasha's season. Tasha's season is what Tasha's I'm calling season. It. <laughs> so to set the time of life that we're in. The first episode with Tasha on it came out last week. The episode for this week has not happened yet. So we've all, all, Maggie, <laughs> one episode, Claire and Dale, and then Tasha's first episode. Mm-hmm. How have you been liking this season, Alex? What do you think? I don't love Claire. And it's not because of like, it's not because of her. I actually yeah. do like her. I think she's really smart and she's beautiful. But I don't love that she came into the season and like, I think she was open, but I do think she was talking to Dale before. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wish she would have just faked it for the sake of all of the crew that like their jobs were depending on this, like all of the production prep that went into this to book this whole resort. The whole crew and cast had to quarantine and it's better that she didn't fake it because now we have Tasha. But my first reaction was just like, you have so many people relying on you for their jobs. Just just do, I don't know. You're here to find love, but you're also here to carry a whole TV show. Yeah. Like and I think you have to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for a lot of leads, like <clears throat> they knew like they knew her, who their person was from the beginning, but mm-hmm. they had the to do the whole show. Yeah. Usually it's who, at least for the last couple seasons, has been whoever got the first, first impression, impression rose. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's been pretty obvious, like yeah. going through. Like, I mean, maybe Hannah Brown's season, we were all like, what oh. the hell is Jed? Jeb, Jed, 
dog no, food commercial man doing ahead. ear still. Brown. <laughs> yeah. I love her so much, but I do not approve of her choice in men. Oh, I don't. Neither, I mean, she learned. Hannah Brown's been. <laughs> She's a lockdown I'll, Tyler C. Yeah. She <laughs> She's <needs to> trying. <laughs> pop away. <laughs> um, do you think Claire is really like kind and nice? I think she's not. Yeah, I'd be interested mm-hmm. to hear from production side yeah, too. Yeah, I want to know what fan production thinks and a production yeah. person. So, do you think she's getting a bad edit or that she is? Oh, I think she's big, getting a bad. Edit. That's a big I debate think they online. Dislike her. I think she's getting a bad edit, but I also think she's an egocentric monster. Yeah, I do think she's getting a bad edit, but there's a reason. Like production usually doesn't just try to screw over the lead. Yeah. Um, oh. And it doesn't serve them, but I think she's not. I don't think she's a nice person. But I guess if you yeah. put people's with. jobs in like jeopardy and it's the yeah. people who are <laughs> like, I don't hate her, but I think, <laughs> I think she's so obsessive and like she couldn't help herself. I don't think she made a decision where she was like, screw this whole crew. Like, I'm out of here. I don't care about this. I think she was really just like had tunnel vision and she couldn't do anything else except for think and talk about Dale. A thing that I saw only 12 couples who have been on The Bachelor have been married out of, I think there's 21 seasons. That's wild. There's more than believe that. 21 seasons, and I would believe that. Really? It, does, it usually that. doesn't work out long term. Yeah, And I yeah. will say the Bachelorette seasons are more successful than The Bachelor seasons. The I women think, are more... Yeah. I think they have picking all, partners than the men are. I think are it's probably least. more than 21 then, because I think it was... All the women's seasons have ended in proposals. Not necessarily. I mean, uh, almost all the seasons have yeah. ended in proposals. The, the outliers are few and far between. Yeah. There were um, just a couple of no. But the proposals don't necessarily no. lead to weddings because, because yeah. of all the obvious reasons there. Yeah, However, yeah. there is a huge cash bonus if you get married. And there's a bigger cash bonus if you get married and ABC films it. Oh, so, really? Um, I think people also get married for that reason. I heard that yeah. if you get uh, if you don't get married or something like that, you have to return within like two years. You have to return mm-hmm. the ring. Yeah. I'm so just like, if you don't get married, but you're together for two years, you can keep the ring. But if you break up before that, you have to give it back. Oh, Neil Lane. That like, makes sense because yeah. that ring is worth like $100,000. Yeah, that's itself. what I, yeah. I looked at the average price for it. <gasps> what is it? It's like $100,000. That's a lot. That is a that's lot. down payment on a house most places. Okay, maybe yeah. that'll be my plan and I can get Will on board. I'm going to go on The Bachelor. I'm going to win to get the ring. <laughs> I don't have to stay in it for two years. Girl, but once I keep the ring. It. Stick with Food Baby. I know. But is the Food Baby going to give me? Yeah, you got to get more sponsors for Food Baby. Here's the yeah. thing. When you go on shows like that, you sign a waiver, like waiving any rights to your own like mortification, embarrassment, psychological health, reputation. Like you sign away all of your rights. They can portray your story any way they want to. Mm-hmm. But Los Angeles real estate is really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very helpful. She wants to get that bag. Yeah. <laughs> I just want a backyard. <laughs> Maggie, Listen. what did you think of Tasha's uh, uh, first episode? Because you watched the... Only the first one. You I only watch watched Claire. It. You just watched Man, Tasha's. that woman can command an entire room of like 20 men so well. So She's well. so beautiful. Hot. Is she? <laughs> She's, She's so hot. So like her is coming out of that pool, or is she like, a dang. Disney princess? Yes. yes. Yeah. She is. She yeah. looks and acts like a Disney princess. And she's so charismatic. And mm-hmm. yeah. And she's so sweet. Like she seems yeah. so genuinely nice. I don't think we get that a lot. Mm-hmm. Not that Certainly other leads not are from mean. Claire. But <laughs> Claire was like, "I'm old. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. Don't talk to me." Yeah. I think Claire has gone to a lot of therapy and memorized a lot of things yeah. that her therapist has said. Because it like she would like say things like, "And I am setting this boundary, and I don't <laughs> have to settle." And I was like, oh, all, right. "All right, I'm glad you have worked on some things, but like you got to put it in your own words sometimes, Claire." <laughs> Kind of like McKenna from last season. Yeah. <laughs> McKenna from Pilot Pete season was this young girl and she was really pretty, but I think she just was not ready to get married. No. But it seemed like she had memorized all these positive affirmations beforehand. Mm. And so she came on and when she got eliminated, she was just like, I am a strong woman yeah. and oh, I will right. find someone who will respect I'm me. And, it was, and I'm falling yeah. in love with myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was, was like, she was it like, was a bit much, but it was also cool to see. 
her compared to like some of the crazies that come on. Oh, yeah. I know. And she was a Canadian influencer was her job. <laughs> and her claim to fame on the show, what she gave oh. the show was, sorry for anyone listening, you're not gonna, you know, get the visual, but for everyone viewing, she did this crazy tongue, like licking her lips thing sure. all the time. She was always like, Oh no. Like no. full big tongue yeah. out of her oh, mouth, no. licking around. No. She makes fun. I saw her do a TikTok yeah. about it. She makes fun of it now, but it was so <laughs> bizarre to watch. You were just like, girl, you were on TV. <laughs> they were filming. But she this. was cute. She was like a good like I, I agree. I liked when she left that she was like a little kind of fake, but also yeah. like well, I'm not going to be that sad about this because I'm going to move on and it's going to be okay. Like, it's not mm-hmm. the end of the world. So. I like her a lot now, too, seeing her, like, on TikTok. And she's yeah. just, like, young and fun. And it's it's cool to see that personality from her. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think Taisha – or who do you want Taisha to be with? Because we have someone we want. I don't even know any of these guys. That's the thing. I can't Claire name one didn't person. didn't let us get to know any of them. Yeah. Oh, except for Bennett. I love Bennett. I, mean, I don't think he's going to make Bennett's it. But a like, joke, but but he's a he's great joke. Such he's a so good funny, joke. and he, no, he's in Bennett on it looks too. Looks like Clark Kent. He looks oh. like Clark Kent. He went to Harvard. He drinks martinis in his room, but he's like aware of how over the top he is. So I like let it pass. Yeah, mm-hmm. he hams it up. Yeah. But we like easy. We want I easy, love, I love easy. easy. To either win or be the next be Bachelor because he is so funny. But and they he already can host a show. On, uh, I know Tyler C's friend Mike or something or Matt. Mike, Mike J. Matt J. Matt James. Matt James. Oh, Who yeah. has never been? But I think he might be the first lead. That, Chris never, Harrison, if you're listening to this, <laughs> Easy is next. We love him. He can host a whole show. Yeah. <laughs> but what are you saying about uh, Matt James? I think except for the early seasons, this is one of the first seasons where the lead has never been on the Bachelor franchise before. Yeah. Because the way it works is it's mm. usually like the, there will be a season of The Bachelor and then one of the last like three or four women will become The Bachelorette. Right. And then that cycle continues. And the current Bachelor season that's filming with Matt, he was supposed to be on Claire's season. Mm. And she got mad at him for... She got mad at him? Oh, what there is was some drama? Wait, cameo. What? He went yes. on Cameo, you know, the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. website where you can mm-hmm. pay for videos of someone. Personalized. Someone saying yeah. hi. Yeah. And yeah. she got mad that he did that, like, at the beginning of quarantine and called him out for it. And so it was kind of awkward. And then, like, obviously they couldn't have him on the show now because she would just hate him. Mm-hmm. But he was already in Bachelor World because he was Tyler but C's But the friend. audience doesn't oh. really know him unless you follow yeah. Tyler C on Yeah. They have like a food show together TikTok for a- or whatever on oh. ABC. Oh, not no, like it's um, prime ABC. It's, but it's called, an online show. I don't think it's a show. It's called ABC Food Tours, and I think it's something where they like help underprivileged children like make sure they get meals. Oh, and so it's more about like I think they'll do events where where they'll have kids come out, and I think it's mostly about like making sure children get fed. I believe. <laughs> Mm. That's so I believe sweet. That w- it's what it's about. Yeah, it's actually really cool. And they'll do like runs where everyone comes out and it's kind of a fundraiser. Um, but yeah, it's it's like more of a charity organization oh, no. they started. See, this this just proves to me you have to click on things when you see that. You can't <laughs> yeah, just read ABC food tours. And then I'm like, yeah, he has an online show on ABC <laughs> where he goes on a food tour. No, I did love Hannah's season, though, because I feel like all of those guys are best friends now. Oh, They're really yeah. cute together. And like Dylan is friends with them and Dylan and Hannah are still together and they just bought a house. They're so cute. Aww. You're following so many people. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I have those specific I couples I love. On Instagram. <laughs> Who's your favorite uh, bachelor, bachelorette person? Ooh, person? I think Caitlin Bristow. I love her. I think she's so funny <clears throat> and she's so smart. And she was one of the first leads we got, especially the women where she like was quick witted and had a personality and like, We'll kind of make fun of herself and we didn't get that a lot it was very like flat personalities before that yeah but i love her maggie can you hit us with something else you learned about the bachelor mm. yeah there's um there's a reason why couples are rarely shown eating <clears throat> on dates nobody eats and that's primarily because no one wants to watch you eat and the mics will pick up on it low previously told glamour mag so between the two date portions they would bring us to a hotel where you can shower and change and get ready. And it's during that time where you can eat. Because yeah. I did notice that in a lot of bachelor season, nobody's really eating. Mm-hmm. They sit down at the table and there's like a plate of food and no one touches it. Yeah. yeah. And there's no chef in the house for all these mm-hmm. people. Uh-huh. 
it's only one person who ever can make dinner for the rest of the people. Wait, they make their own dinners in the house? Mm -hmm. Everyone's responsible for making our own meals in the house. Former contestant Ashley no. Spivey revealed dinner would be prepared by whoever felt like cooking for everyone. Oh, Ashley yes, it was felt crazy. Like it. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> Ashley. Yeah, she's yes. the one. She cried a lot. I right? worked with her sister once. Oh, wait. Am I? <laughs> is she the one who said I have a great story or is she the <clears throat> one who thought that the pomegranate was an onion? I didn't watch what? her season. I had to Google her. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, pomegranates can kind of look like a red onion if you look quick. Not if you <laughs> cut into them. <laughs> if you go like this, whoa. <laughs> it's an onion. If you're checking your blind spot, it's, yeah. an onion. <laughs> it's an onion. Did you watch um, Follow Your Heart or Listen to Your Heart? I tried so hard. I didn't stick. <gasps> I know. I, I know. Can't I'm sorry. That. Becky I'm and I are here. leaving. I think I'm it was. Here. I also have a bachelor group that I watch with. And I think that. Oh, okay. Didn't Listen to Your Heart come out at the beginning of quarantine? It did. Yes. Yeah. And so. It doesn't make sense that I didn't watch it because I had all this free time. But I have this bachelor group that I, I would always watch with. And when quarantine started, we would still watch together and just text. And this group fell off of that very quickly. <laughs> um, and I kind of did, too. I think I would have stuck with it if it was just me. But, like, yeah. my group wasn't into it. And I kind of got talked out of it. And I don't really regret it. Like, I don't know if I really missed much. Yeah. So, Listen to Your Heart was a Bachelor franchise spinoff that was if you took Bachelor Bachelorette and it had a baby with uh, American Idol. So, you had That's to. exactly what, what happened. They took American Idol people who had auditioned for it and yeah. put them in this dating show. So, everyone was a singer. And on the first, like, two episodes, you had to find, you know, your perfect match. And if you didn't find your perfect match, Chris Harrison came on and was like, actually, you have to leave. Um, so yep. they kicked a bunch of people out and then it was down to like eight or nine couples and then it turned into American Idol or like it turned into one of those competition shows. So on the first couples competition, they had to sing uh, for Kesha and then it was like Kesha <laughs> and like what? I think Jason Mraz what? was there at yes, one point. He was. Um, and so it didn't matter what drama was going on in the house. Like you could tell like Chad, he had to stay because yeah. the producers wanted him to stay. He was this villain of uh, JoJo season. He's from JoJo season. Jojo season. And quick segue, I <gasps> want to mention this. He's on OnlyFans. Oh, I know. Ooh. <laughs> I hate that. I hate everything about that. <laughs> I don't want to know the kind of person that pays to see more of Chad. Because <laughs> he was not a and nice person. He does person. sex stuff too. <gasps> he does sex stuff. Yeah. Does he show his dick? I haven't watched it. <laughs> Should we watch it now? <laughs> Should we watch it now? Wait. Can you put it on the Try Guys card? <laughs> Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing Idol. these duets. They're yeah. singing. They have these performances. They're being judged like American Idol. But one of the criteria for judging them is how much on stage chemistry do they have? Can they prove their love during this song yeah. oh. to Kesha? It is <laughs> outrageous and ridiculous. Yeah. And what I think was so cool about it is because it was <laughs> a competition show <laughs> at one point, which we learned from when Keith did Bring the Funny, in California, you cannot like fuck with a um, show that is for money. So if you win mm -hmm. money at the end of it, there are like these huge contest rules. Oh. Um, so like when there was drama in the house, let's say it was Bachelor or Bachelorette. If there's drama, the producers are going to try and keep one person along for the ride, right? Mm -hmm. This show, if there was drama, it didn't matter because there were oh. outside judges and they just picked who left. So any drama only lasted like one episode. Yes. Wow. And it was only like maybe 10 episodes. We were big fans. And on this last episode with, I forget if it was Claire or Tasha, but they were uh, singing. It no, was it Claire was Claire and Dale. Oh, was it? Claire and Dale on their only yes. date that led to the fantasy suite. Yes. We like flew through their whole love story in yeah. like half an episode. Um, they were dancing to the singers from the winners oh. of Listen to Your Heart, yeah. who are actually a very cute and sweet couple they are so who cute. are very They're talented. Very they were very pretty, yeah. both yes. of them. Oh, yeah. They're very, very good looking couple. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voices. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait till they have babies. They're going to be beautiful babies. So cute. But if they don't want to have babies, they don't have Oh, to have yeah, babies. that's fine. They no pressure. Totally chill. They don't know me. It's fine. I'm not pressuring <laughs> them. They can take that up with their own mothers. Yeah. <laughs> But did you really just love the show because they sang Sean Mendes all the time? <laughs> That's what I do Becky? remember. It was Sean Mendes, John Mayer, yeah. 
Anna Star oh, is yeah. born and, songs. Yeah, and what was that one? It was that one like country song too. Keith and I were walking in like a Target oh, yeah, or something, and there was one song they song. kept playing on "Listen to Your Heart." Mm. And Keith was like, "Where do I know this?" Oh, <laughs> the Bones. It's like uh, that. Like, oh yeah, if the, the bones, bones are good. good. Yeah, whatever that <laughs> song like, is. Keith was like, "Where do I know this?" And I was like, "Can you guys Listen sing more?" Heart. I don't know this song. Uh, that's literally, oh, that's all, literally I all I remember. Um, oh, it sounds I like a Lou song. They like thought him on the spot. The Bones are good. The Bones are good. It's like the bones of your house are good, yeah. but it doesn't matter if the rest is falling apart. Yeah, it doesn't but matter the bones if something's are good. shaking. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I think it's like a country singer and a not country singer did a collab. I'm into this. Oh, <laughs> no, that was a really long tangent okay. about that. Okay, listen to your. Let's get back to Tasha episode one. Yeah, how do we feel about the switch from Claire to Tasha? I wasn't there for the beginning of the okay. switch, so you how tell do you me. Feel <laughs> about who Tasha's dating, and do you have any high hopes? Is there anyone you liked in that first episode you saw? I'm still trying to get to know everybody. I don't know. So it's so a lot we. of like mm-hmm. little conversations of the same thing. It's like I think I may meet my husband here. <laughs> I'm like, how does she keep doing this over and over? <laughs> no way. <laughs> how does she keep saying the same thing? It's the same conversation, but As it's very entertaining. Who's like, Happily married. What she's doing seems exhausting. It does seem exhausting. Like, and she's she has like the biggest smile on her mm-hmm. face. I'm like, I'm really believing her. But at the same time, I'm like, how is she doing this? I know. She is so much more fun than Claire. She's just lighthearted and fun. And Claire was so like serious and like angry almost like yeah. on the defensive from day one. And so I feel like if I'm the guys and I interviewed for like Claire and I was like okay let's go and we come in and Claire just falls in love with Dale in 12 days Mm -hmm. and is so rude to everyone and then Taisha with her beautiful face and her Disney princess smile walks in I'm like oh fuck yeah this is like a thousand times better like I'm so much happier she's She's so so nice nice. she's so nice and so fun and she's giving all of them like time to chat with her and she's Mm -hmm. actually asking questions about them like this is the first time we're really learning about who these guys yeah, are. that's true. Because mm-hmm. Claire would only ask about Dale when she was on any other date. Oh, and, really? and so we don't know any of these guys. Overall have better careers and are more interesting because they skew older than normal. Like they're all like early 30s, late 20s, early 30s. So they're not 25. So they have like better jobs. Like the boy band manager. Boy band manager. <laughs> I'm so curious <laughs> about the show. Band. Band. Like, what boy band, bro? Let well, us know. here's the thing. His lower third says boy band manager because yeah. it always says their, yeah. their job. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have no idea what that means because she won't talk to anyone. Claire she won't talk to anyone. What their job yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys clock when, who was it? Riley, maybe? I don't know. When one of the guys asked Tasha, and so what, because these guys, Tasha's not their lead. Claire was their lead. So they had no time to research her, right? She just walked in the room and Mm -hmm. then they're going. And one of them was like, so what do you do for a living? And Tasha was like, um, you know, God bless her. She was like, I travel a lot and I'm in like the lifestyle space. And I was like, bro, this is what she does for a living. <laughs> she's an influencer. Don't make her say it. And she's pretty big in the bachelor world too. It's not like mm-hmm. yeah. Ari where they just pluck someone from years ago. Like, No, she did Paradise. Yeah, with JPJ. Remember JPJ. See, that's how I know she's nice. She gave JPJ a shot. I don't know how she, JPJ is John Paul Jones, right? John Paul I Jones? I think he and made her last name. name. He oh, okay. 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 The this surfer like dude with long, yeah, long blonde he hair. He spoke like a cartoon. Yeah. He, really? He had like this crazy voice. Do a JPJ impersonation. I, I have not watched JPJ in oh. so long. What is I, I, I just he remember him saying quote. his name all the time. Because whose season was he on? He was on yeah, Hannah's season. Yeah. Hannah's season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he didn't last too long. No. But, but yeah, he he's always right touching to his hair. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, he speaks exactly like how people would think surfer guys from LA talk. Like, mm. I, I don't, I'm like, like afraid to do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to insult anyone from California. <laughs> oh, should I share my story about how I met Pete? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Um, so Will and I would always call Pilot Pete, Pilot Poot. Um, <laughs> wait, but <laughs> say it again. Peel it poot. Peel it poot. So I'm only going to call him that from now on. <laughs> Pete was, I guess Peter was mm-hmm. our last bachelor, and he was famous for being on Hannah's season of The Bachelor, and they did it in a windmill. Mm-hmm. Um, and four his mom times, and four times. times. And times. Yeah. That was the thing she revealed on TV. Yeah. Like, yeah. we had sex four times that night. And then his Whoa. mom was in the she audience didn't cheering him. him on. Like, yeah, my <laughs> son did it four like, times. 
You're doing great, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And so this is pre-quarantine. Uh, we all went to Golden Road, which is a brewery in L.A., and we were hanging out, and then Peelip Poot showed up, and everyone at the brewery was watching, and we kind of got this table in the back so we could have more privacy, but, like, <laughs> I was really nervous because I was trying not to fangirl <laughs> because this season was airing. Like, I think oh, his finale yeah. was, like, about to air. That's and so, true. We didn't know yet. Yeah, I don't think we knew or, like, it had just ended or something, mm -hmm. but he was really, really nice. I think in person he was, like, much more charming than I would I was expecting. I thought he would be like a little bit dorkier. And then um, Will, your boyfriend, really mm -hmm. likes to do this hand washing bit on Instagram. <laughs> oh, I forgot yes. about that. So I remember just I was like flicking through Instagram was like click, click, click on stories. <laughs> and all of a sudden on Will's story was Peelip Poot. Peelip Poot. <laughs> yeah, he does do this thing camera. where it's like, <laughs> sorry. That's exactly what it is. We also and, got and, and, all of the boys to do it, all the Try Guys to do it at the last Christmas party. <laughs> also, for, for some reason, yeah. whenever Will drinks, he'll do this thing where he gets like really creepy and he goes like <laughs> this and like, I don't know, rubs his hands together and like looks at you to make you feel uncomfortable. But he got like Gilly he got, Hick Hot Guy Love. Yeah. And he got Peel It Poot to do it. <laughs> and it, it's on my story somewhere. I'll repost it when this episode comes out. Yes. Okay. Please do. And did you, or did you guys not? Do shots out of your shoes that night. Oh, shoes? Yes. The boys said shoeies. Wh Why? Shoeies? What? Why? Why would you put so, a shot in your shoe? It was this thing. It's actually a whole beer. And <gasps> so it started in Australia. <laughs> I believe it started Guys, in Australia. Stays in the, this it stays in the bottle, right? Like mere weeks. It goes in your shoe. It's before like, lockdown. Okay. Mere weeks. This yeah. is not okay. sanitary. I think it was March? Early March? February. Yeah. Early March. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, it. Ooh. I think the Mad Hueys made it popular. But anyways, you basically like funnel a beer <laughs> through your shoe. So you get your your shoe like this, and you pour a beer in, and then why, you drink it Alex, from your shoe. Why? Wait, 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 We've wait, 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 wait. A tennis shoe. A tennis shoe. Whatever shoe you're wearing. The boys have done and it off the sandals, it? dress shoes. Don't it's you disgusting. ruin your shoe? Yeah, they don't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was like, that's why Will had to get a job at a mall because he always buying shoes. <laughs> like, shoes are a, a one-time thing, right? You wear them all week. Oh you go out Saturday <laughs> night, then you throw them away. Yeah, it's like a disposable camera. It's like Bieber oh with his God. underwear. It, like, it's something that, that was popular when we were in college. And the boys haven't really done it for years. But when all of like this one group of boys are all high school friends, they get together. They do all that dumb stuff. And I think did you do it? <gasps> I will never. <laughs> okay. I remember there's another couple in our group, and the boyfriend did it one time when we were mad, and she was or when we were mad. The boyfriend <laughs> did a shoey one time when we were out, and she got so mad they left immediately. This is the beginning of the night, <laughs> and I believe one of them slept on the couch that night. <laughs> oh, and I think was he learned his lesson. No shoeys for you. And that was the last shoey. No shoeys. Shoeys seem unpleasant at every iteration. The drinking yeah. of it, the putting your shoe back on. Should we just do one now to close out the episode? <laughs> okay. I mean, pour no. your tea in your <laughs> shoe. I can't do it. All right. Well, Alex, it has been a treat. Yes. yes. A real Thank you treat. Thank you for having me on. Yes. Thank you for coming on. Again. This was a pleasure. This was a treat. Yeah. yeah, where can people watch? Uh, so obviously they're going to watch Food Babies. Mm -hmm. They can follow you on Instagram. You can drop mm -hmm. your handle. I'm at a a herring, and that's <laughs> herring spelled like the fish. Um, <laughs> and you'll see more Food Babies episodes coming soon. Yes, Woo! you will. Yes. Mags, did you learn anything you'll take with you? How did the um, episode end for you? I'll watch next week's <gasps> episode as long as it's not three hours long. Okay, watch. <laughs> little tip. Watch the next day on Hulu so that there are no commercials. Oh, that's a good. Well, if you pay for mm -hmm. the ad free. Oh, oh, okay. or I can give you my login. record okay. it. <laughs> Thanks, and girl. And then <laughs> speed through the commercials. I don't watch live because no one has time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very long. I actually Venmoed my dad. Uh, I asked him <laughs> how much it would cost to make Hulu because you know, free. as adults, I have my parents' Hulu password. <laughs> um, I Venmoed him and was like, "How much is it to make this ad free? I, I will pay it. I will. I'll do it. I can't handle this. The Bachelor is four hours long. <laughs> oh yeah." You have to not have a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening to another episode. We hope you enjoyed our guest, Alexandria, as much as we did. Yay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us on wherever you get your podcasts. Rate us five stars. 
Um, drop a comment below and let us know who else from the Second Try staff you want to see on the show because, you know, we're in such close proximity to them. And <laughs> We're all getting tested all the time, so it makes it easy for us to have them as guests. So if there's a Second Try staff member you want to see, comment below or comment somewhere you want the food babies to eat next. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh. yes. We need ideas. Let yeah. us know what foods you want to see. Okay, Yay. guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.